Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm participating in Christie's Beautiful Life and 30 Days of Sketches. And we are using this sketch, and I love that it has mixed media. I can't read who created it. It's uh, pretty tiny, and when I blow it up, it kind of fades out. But I am going to start with a 5x7 portrait, land, uh, portrait photo rather than a circle. Um, I didn't have anything I felt re was really fitting for a circle and I wanted to use this photo of my daughter dressed up in her princess dress. Um, this is many years old so um, it's not a current photo but I wanted to go ahead and document it and it also coincided with a load challenge so uh, this was the perfect photo for the load challenge as well. Um, so I am starting out with some shimmers products. I'm starting out with uh, an Inklings, which is Plum Crazy, and then I'm going to add a blue, which is Oaky Bear Blue, and that's also an Inklings. Um, the Periwinkle colored one there is a Creamies. It's called Sky's the Limit. Um, I test it out there really quickly, but I don't end up really using it. So uh, these are the only Shimmers products that I have, and I really like them, and maybe uh, I will be investing in a little bit more of the Shimmers products, but um, they're pretty awesome. I, re I really do enjoy working with them. But like I said, these are the only ones that I have, so this is what I'm working with today, and they're the perf perfect colors for the overlay on her dress. Um, if you want to know a little bit about the dress, it is a wedding dress that we found at Goodwill. It had a long train. My mom and I um, hemmed it, took the train off, and um, the top of it fit my daughter perfectly, so that worked out really well. And then we created that sheer purple overlay with the florals on it, so it didn't look quite as much like um, a wedding dress. It looked more like a princess dress. And the reason that she has that is because we, um, that was her first job. She was a princess for little girls' birthday parties. This was her royal princess dress. She also went as several of the Disney princesses to different parties, so Belle, Snow White, um, Jasmine, she has a lot, she had a lot of the costumes, um, but this one was her royal princess dress, the generic princess as we called it, and so I um, wanted to document that. So you saw me just color up the frame, that frame was uh, from the Silhouette Studio, I cut it out on my Silhouette, and then I wasn't sure what color I was going to use to, um, to have the frame, so I went ahead and colored it in white, and then I inked it up with Royal Treatment, which is the name of the color from Catherine Pooler. And it is the perfect color of that dark purple to go with the photo and with the other purples on the layout. Now the florals that I am fussy cutting, those are florals from a stamp set by Photoplay. And they were made exclusively for scrapbook.com. They were something I got free when I did another order on scrapbook.com. And it's called Feathery peonies and I really like how they came out and those were stamped also in royal treatment I think some sweet 16 and some pixie dust uh, in from Catherine Pooler those are all Catherine Pooler inks and then the greens hmm what did I use for the greens um, the greenery I think I used some uh, green tea and some I think melon ice or garden party I'm not really sure I'm pretty sure it was um, melon ice but actually no I'm pretty sure it was garden party and uh, so I really like how that looks and I really like the green and the purple together um, it's a good color combination that I'm fond of so I did decide to go ahead and pop her up onto some foam just to give her some added dimension and also that allowed me to go ahead and try the photo with the frame over the mixed media without actually getting the photo and the frame wet because it's got that layer of foam in between it and now I am just sprinkling some of each of those colors around it because I want to add a little bit more of a framed effect around the photo and I'm also using the the purple off of the packaging that I used there below the frame that I colored up. So that is that royal treatment um, color from Catherine Pooler. 
I, I did start with gessoed paper. This is just plain old cardstock that is taped down to a foam core board that is covered with packing tape so that it doesn't absorb any of the moisture. And then it's just, you can see there I have blue tape and it is gessoed so that the uh, paint would run. And then I also find that if you leave it on there, if you're doing a lot of um, mixed media, if you leave it on there to dry completely like overnight, it will go back flat. So that's a, a tip for you. You can um, tape down your stuff. Now it is very likely that when you pull up your tape, I'm not sure about using purple tape because I don't have any, but the blue tape sometimes does kind of like rip a little bit of that edge or um, you can see the line from where the gesso stopped up against that blue. But in this case, I always, almost always cut off that edge. It's like an eighth of an inch on each side. And so it provides a perfect, um, a perfect trim so that you can border your entire layout with a different piece of paper underneath it. Or sometimes if I don't cut it off, I will follow that line with a stitch on my sewing machine so that it's a lot less noticeable. Um, and you're using that stitch to kind of go over the line where the gesso meets the paper. And then I'm going to go ahead and layer up these uh, flowers. I had the flowers in the bottom right hand corner laid out really well and then I kind of forgot how I had them. Um, I had it the opposite where the, the little bud was at the top or on the right hand side and the piece that I'm laying down right now was to the left of the the darker purple floral but um, and I liked it better now that I see it on screen <laughs> but um, I must have forgotten what I did and just went with it this way so this is what I ended up with and it still looks good and it, it works out so and it's not like I'm unhappy with it or anything it just I really when I saw how I first laid it down on the video I went oh I really like that <laughs> so um, this is one of those cases where it's good to maybe photograph your layout how you like it and that before you before you glue everything down so that you can do it exactly the same way but I don't typically do that because when I'm filming um, the device that I would use to photograph it and look at is the device that is also also filming so <laughs> it doesn't work out very well. I'm going with a uh, diagonal design as you can see there and I'm just using my tweezers to kind of hold that flower down to um, make sure it stays as it adheres and I didn't really have to do that with the bottom corner because that paper was like really dry and everything but because the paper in the upper right is a little bit uh, warped from still drying with the glue underneath the photo. Um, it kind of had a little bit of a raise in it so I wanted to make sure that they were stuck together. So then I tried a navy blue paper behind it as well because I did bring in that blue underneath the photo but then I decided I liked the actual pur purple better um, and I did go ahead and stitch all the way around the layout in um, navy blue. So the stitching is in navy blue, there's some navy blue drips there, and then the title is also going, going to be in navy blue, and that's how I'm bringing those colors together. I'm using this wood veneer, these really super delicate leaves, those are from Scrapping Reflections, and that is uh, Sandy Reversky's um, shop, and she is also known as State Goddess on YouTube, or on most of her social media, and um, they are super delicate uh, but I really like them. And those are the bigger pieces. The littler pieces I probably got from, they're probably out of a Kaiser Craft box of wood veneer. You can see I have a whole bunch of wood veneer there, and those are all like florals and foliage um, in the bottom right hand corner there. But I'm just using the foliage, I'm not using the florals at the moment. Now I'm using these little tiny stickers from Freckled Fawn, and I'm using them, I'm pulling all the white ones for my title but I am going to use a Sharpie in navy blue to go over them to make them the color that I want. Um, and that's a really good tip. If you have letters in white that you want changed, use uh, some alcohol ink or um, something to color them up. 
Now you saw me try the title out just to the right of the photo and that's because in the sketch you see there you can see there's a line of text that goes out um, horizontally from the photo and I was seeing if I liked that better and I didn't. I didn't like it better so I didn't end up using it. I end up using everything nestled down into this bottom right hand corner and I like how that looks. My title is A Real Princess and the real is going to be in quotation marks um, because that was basically her job was to be a real princess. She had to have like a little backstory so when the kids would ask about the prince or where she lived she had all of that um, you know as part of her backstory so that they would believe her. And I am dipping these letters, they are adhesive back letters but I'm dipping them into um, some Nouveau Deluxe adhesive that I've put onto the acetate here and the reason that I'm doing that is because I have found that these letters like to peel up a little bit on the corners after being in the album for a period of time. So I want to make sure that doesn't happen. So um, since they're so small, it's it's very unlikely that or very difficult to get a layer of glue, you know, straight from the tip of the glue bottle onto the letter. So if you just put a little pile onto some acetate or a plastic bag like I did in this case, you can kind of dip it in there. Some people like to put it on their like the back of their hand and dip it in there. Um, but this works for me and I like how uh, it holds everything down a lot better than if you don't use the glue. And I'm just going over a couple of the areas of the letters with that blue Sharpie again to make sure that it is nice and um, saturated and there aren't any little white spots peeking out. And then I just hand drew in the little quotation marks because this alpha does not have quotation marks. So uh, I just did that by hand. And then I'm using my navy blue Muji pen to go ahead and write the text about how this was my daughter's first job. Um, I think she was... 13 or had just turned 14 when she started this job and I would drive her to the party. I'd wait out front. Um, she would go in and do a story for the children. They would reenact the story with their own little props and then she would give out either tattoos or um, wands. The birthday girl got a tiara and um, they would have the story also on um, a recording so that the kids could act it out and um, then she would just interact with them for a while and she made quite a bit of money doing this at that age and it worked out really well for her. That is a wig that she's wearing in this in this uh, photo. Her natural hair is brown, dark brown, but not quite as black as that, but it saved her the time of having to curl her own hair. Um, when she was Belle, she would use her own hair and we would curl it all up for her and put it up like Belle wore hers. Um, but if she wasn't Belle, it was just easier to use the wig. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I am adding a variety of sequins from several different sequin packs of Spiegel Mom scraps. And I don't have the names of them because some of them, like the smaller packs, are ex exclusives from the Creative Cuts Club. And that's just going to finish off the layout. So check out all the other ladies that are playing along with Christy's Beautiful Life today. She is doing a sketch every day in the month of October, or at least the first 30 days. So Halloween we take off. But um, there are a bunch of us playing along. Links are down below. And I hope you enjoy this video. And I will see you next time. Here are the close-ups. Bye.